Hi, this is Ed again in San Diego, and welcome back to Global TV Talk Show. Our very special guest today is a good friend, uh, business colleague, Angela Weinberger, Managing Director, I'm reading this, Global People Transitions in Zurich, Switzerland. And globalpeopletransitions.com is the website. We're here to celebrate uh, Angie Weinberger's new book and new approach to old business. And that is having to do with people in transition in life. The foundation of all this, and, and Angie's going to get into it much better than me, is the global mobility industry. And so she has written a book. The Global Rockstar Album, 21 Verses to Find Your Tact as an Inclusive Leader. And uh, I'm reading show notes here that was sent to me. The SEO keyword, Inclusive Leadership, The Global Rockstar Album. And a few tags I'm going to read just to give you an idea of what we're about to talk about so you can get ready to take notes. Leadership, inclusion, global mobility, expat life, career development on a mission to bring the human touch back into global mobility, expat coaching, psychological safety. Now that is really a lot. Angie, what is inclusive leadership well Ed, first of all welcome for um thank you for um having me back here on your show i am excited uh as you can tell i'm very excited that we launched a book and it's out on amazon now i'm i've been working on this book for a while so yeah first of all i'm really happy that we made it we got there Inclusive leadership is a very important topic, a key topic at the moment. I think it is becoming, or it has become so important because leadership was not always inclusive. Um, management, particularly, you know, uh, was kind of biased in many ways. The job market was biased. Uh, many people did not even have access to certain positions. They did not even have access to certain companies. And I think inclusion is about giving more people access, people with very different backgrounds, with very different abilities, with very different skills on different areas of the mental health spectrum, and giving all of these people access to positions and roles. And I think this will also impact global mobility, which is, you know, the area where we come from, because we will see and we already see a different demographic on international assignments, cross-border commuting, and basically transferring from country to country. Okay, so that is interesting. So in, when I think, uh, before you just went through all that, inclusive leadership, that means more women, people of color, and inclusive and the uh, uh, is sort of like diametrically opposed to the old school. Yeah, uh, and the old school would be exclusive. Obviously, that would be, you know, the, the opposite. Um, and the exclusive is not always um, intentional. However, you know, because of the systems and uh, the way the systems worked, it, for the longest time ever, uh, we had systems in place and even our HR systems, they're not always um, inclusive. You know, they many of these um, have been biased in the past. Yeah. For example, the way we define performance or what we consider to be a good manager or how we, you know, think about leadership. There's this thing that um, you know, for example, with, with leader, when I tell you you're a leader, you probably have an image of a leader in your mind. And, uh, you know, usually we think of Superman, like we have a, like a superhero story um, or, you know, uh, Captain America. That is sometimes, you know, what the, the image we have of a leader. 
And um, and the interesting thing is, though, that a leader is any, everybody. Anybody could be a leader in their field or in their area or in their circle of influence. So, you know, we need to redefine uh, many of our concepts, our images, our mind concepts about leadership. Thank you. How does expat coaching contribute to psychological safety and mental well-being for expats and their families? Now, oftentimes, uh, the spouse or the partner of the employed expat is a forgotten person. Uh, nobody, uh, you know, the company doesn't care. <laughs> not their responsibility, not my job. But when the partner or spouse isn't happy, that expat's very likely going to have a failure on assignment and the company's going to wind up losing uh, money, if not other things. Yeah, yeah. So what, no, when, when we wrote the book, um, and I say we because my team was heavily involved in this uh, process, we, um, we coined a term called rainbow talent. We included all of the groups that you mentioned earlier. We even inc included introverts um, because, you know, sometimes that is also forgotten that um, our systems, our HR systems, for example, they tend to reward extroverts a bit more than introverts. Um, so we included all of these groups in rainbow talent. And now imagine you have Let's say, you know, you have a gay couple on assignment, you have a woman on assignment where the partner is a, is a man, but the partner, uh, you know, maybe always had a career and is unhappy with staying at home and having a family. You and I talked about this already many times, and I don't get tired of talking about, you know, how important it is to support the family system. And still... When we speak of policy and global mobility, what is the first thing we think about? Oh, we provide tax support. Oh, you know, move of household goods, even though we know it's not sustainable. So instead of doing something that would immediately help the expat partner, we usually only consider compliance as something that would need really would really need be worth the investment. Immigration support, for example. So we really need to, you know, change that in club mobility. And finally, 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 provide expat coaching or provide any type of, let's say, support. Yeah, It could even be just a helpline. Someone, an expat and their family, family members can talk to in tough times, in stressful times, in times of insecurity. I mean... We're so surrounded by insecurity all the time. Look at what's happening right now, again, in Gaza. I mean, we're talking about evacuation. We're talking about, you know, how long can, you know, can we watch the situation without having to um, to ensure that we, you know, we might have to evacuate people in the surrounding areas. What are the spillover effects? So all that anxiety that expat families go through, this has become a lot harder in the last few years. And someone needs to recognize that. If we want to continue to send people on international assignments, we really need to help them feel better. And I really think expat coaching can help with, with um, well-being. And I also think it can help with psychological safety. And um, for those who haven't heard the term psychological safety yet, it's also a fairly new term. We're talking a lot about it in the in the book um, and in our blog posts. But I think you know what the, the the important topic about psychological safety is that you feel like you belong to a part of the team where you can state what's on your mind, what's your opinion, where you can talk about things that aren't going well, where you can address issues without having fear of being reprimanded, without having fear of losing your job, or in the case of an expat, without being worried that you will have, you know, have to return to your home country because uh, nobody wanted to hear your opinion here. So 
I, I want to just ask you a question here. What you're talking about is the facts, <laughs> the truth of what goes on in life. As, and when uh, we're talking about uh, an expat assignment, everything is accentuated is then intensified be, be, because of the because of the stresses that are possible not everybody has stress some people figure it out and brush it off or make it work you know they make applesauce when they just have apples <laughs> you know they do something creative but not everybody has the patience or the skill or the happiness internally to experiment you know they they're pissed off or something you know so is this the holy no, grail or is there something else that's the holy no, grail you know like um let me just just maybe say it in a different way because i'm not sure if i came across correctly um Let's say even if, you know, you you do not have, let's say, a culture shock, you know, you adjust well, you move to a country that you love. Uh, let's say you move to Switzerland, you know, it is still for your body and your mind, it is still a stressful experience mm -hmm. because you have a lot to learn. Yeah. So the psychological adjustment process of moving to another culture is just a stressful experience in itself doesn't necessarily have to be negative it doesn't have to have a long lasting negative effect but it's stressful in itself moving somebody from one country to another is one of the top 10 stress experiences in life moving your family to another country and um, so you know there's just it's just the, it, i think it's just a fact however um, there's another reason, you know, why expat coaching would be helpful. Let's say, and this is honestly, Ed, it's a topic that frustrates me to hell. In the last 30 years that I work, work in this profession, we always discuss repatriation. We always talk about integrating talent management in global mobility and global mobility in talent management in succession planning. And still, we haven't found a good solution yet. And why is that? Because of, I think it's because of the way HR is organized and because there's a lack of collaboration across silos. Um, and, and I think that the only way we can solve this problem is by giving power to the expat, by telling the expat, you need to take care of your own career. And sometimes they would just need to have somebody to discuss their career with. And therefore, you know, a coach would be really helpful to see, okay, now I've been in Singapore for two years. I'm not sure where my next step should take me. Should I go to New York or should I go to Malaysia? What would be the advantages? This is a role I've been offered. This is a role I've been offered. Oh, also, you know, maybe I could check out the external market. I need someone who helps me here. So, you know, this could also be a reason for offering this kind of coaching. Um, and then you asked about the Holy Grail. I don't know if I ever talked to you about the Holy Grail before. Uh, probably not. <laughs> I talk a lot about the Holy Grail in the Global Mobility Academy and in my lectures. This is more like, you know, like the, 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 the tool, the ring that rules them all. And nobody has invented it yet. I mean, if you know, if you look at the global mobility technology landscape, everybody talks about that they have the best tool, and you know, they have the assignment management tool that helps with managing the assignments, helps with managing the twenty different vendors we're dealing with. But every global mobility leader that I talk to mainly still works with an Excel sheet. So, you know, we just haven't found that rail yet. Well, what I'm imagining is we're not that far away from it now anymore. You know, there will be some platform that you can use and the platform will help you manage the process finally, manage your vendors better and uh, take away some of that, let's say, transactional work that global mobility managers still deal with a lot these days. So, um, to, yes, go ahead. 
that will also improve the expat experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So oftentimes the, uh, the manager, the HR manager uh, or the HR business partner or whatever title, the point of contact in the company beyond the direct reporting relationship, mm -hmm. which hopefully is positive and helpful rather than fearful or full of risk. Uh, how How is the expat situation, how could the expat situation be improved? Is it, I'm going to ask you, uh, is it that they uh, should be given a coach uh, to help them uh, learn what a pitfall would be before they know it, um, you know, be, before it's visible, mm -hmm. uh, because the coach would, because in my view, the coach, uh, this theory, um, will have been in that position before and uh, will share an experience uh, that could be instructive to the current assignee and family. And I, I, you know, I would think that would be invaluable information, that insight and that uh, adult, adult leadership. <laughs> well, you know, my vision is that you have a global mobility manager. That is the, the function yeah, that deals with the international assignments in within HR and maybe even within the organization. Hmm. In my view, you know, they're still completely underrated. They should be compensated a lot better and they should also report on a more like strategic level and maybe not even into HR, maybe even into the CEO directly. But the global mobility manager will need some sort of support um, because the com they're often overwhelmed, understaffed, and they usually do not have the capacity and maybe also not the education to help with the career coaching side. And uh, and that's why, you know, that's why we are now offering this kind of a support to companies. Um where we take over the career coaching part for the expat population and the expat partners and the global mobility managers so that the mo global mobility managers can focus on their tasks and their transactional work, but also on their strategic consulting that they have to do with the CEO, with the business, with the line managers. So that coach could also theoretically open doors within the company to help the expat perhaps get the next job? That depends on whether this would be an internal or an external coach. I'm currently more thinking about my situation where I would be the external coach and not inside the company. Um, I think what you're thinking of, would I would call that like a sponsor. Hmm, good. Some companies have implemented that kind of a support relationship, like a sponsor who is usually one or two levels up from the expat and they, you know, help open doors, they help find, identify the next role. Um, but then, you know, they're not neutral. Whereas I, as a coach, I can be very neutral in the decision-making process. And I can also consult in case the company has a different opinion, like, oh, your assignment in Singapore ends. Unfortunately, we don't have a job for you anymore. Why don't you just move back to Belgium where you came from? Yeah. So, you know, I can also then help them in in their next steps about repatriation, finding a new job, finding a job in another country, whatever that may be. And also in any kind of like international leadership topics that they might have. Because, you know, if they've just moved from New York City to to Germany, they might not know all the intercultural intricacies of you know, leading a team in Germany and how that is different from from the U.S. I bet that's okay. challenging. Boy. So the let let's go back now and be sure the audience is following 
this. Uh, once again, define the holy, what you call the holy grail of global mobility. <laughs> well, you know, had I invented the holy grail, I would not be sitting here. <laughs> or be sip cocktails on what is that island called with Richard Branson? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, no, the Holy Grail is really like a, a good platform system that helps the global mobility manager, you know, with their assignment process, with their with their vendor management, and basically, you know, combines everything in one system and ideally would be linked to an HR system like Workday so that they don't have to duplicate all of the data entries all the time, et cetera. And it would be linked to all of their providers, you know, like the global tax provider, the health insurance provider, the moving companies, the coach and everybody. What we have developed is an app. It's, it's called Rock Me App. And our app would also be one of those, you know, platforms that would link with a holy grail. Uh, so our like clients can sign up directly to the app. And then we have a secure platform where we can have coaching conversations on, but also we can, um, I can support people, you know, during the week through an online chat, for example. And it's not on WhatsApp or some platform that, you know, is insecure. Thank you very much. Okay. Maybe so, it's a bit of a holy grail. Or maybe it's just yeah. you know one of the rings that rules them all. So your mission is to bring the human touch back into global mobility, expat coaching, psychological safety. Human touch meaning people who who care. Yeah, and also, you know, like um the 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 issue that I saw in the last few years is, you know, in global mobility, we have fragmented processes. People are dealing with so many people in the process because we have outsourced, we offshored many of the big providers. They have some service centers somewhere in the world. But what many expats miss and expat families miss is somebody they can actually talk to. Because let's imagine you have some issue going on. Like, for example, you know, your partner is very unhappy because they cannot find a job in the host country. Um, and, you know, then you're looking for a therapist or you're looking for somebody to support because, you know, they're close to a depression. Normally, you would not go on Google to find that therapist. I mean, All right? You you go to a, a, you you ask a option. ask a friend or or someone who's yeah. yeah. But in your home country, that's what you would do. You would talk to somebody that you know that you trust. And I'm hoping that you know we can be be sort of a like a trusted advisor. So if you know somebody ever has an issue, that they can they know oh, there is somebody at Global People Transitions, and they will. They will be here for me and I can actually talk to a human being. I don't talk to a chatbot. I don't talk to AI. There is a human at the other end and they have a big heart and they will take care with a recommendation and they will get back either with, you know, a coach of the network or somebody that will help me. So as you know, I know I have a lot of networks and I'm connected with a lot of people. So usually I tell people, if you need something, ask me because I can probably give you the right person. Um, and and um, the, oh, I lost my train of thought. Well, let's go back to the Rockstar album. Okay, the yeah. Global Rockstar album. Yeah. Is this a record? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you sing? No. I don't sing. I said <laughs> the next, maybe, maybe the next launch party, you know, if I see <laughs> up to it, I will sing. But this time this would have been too much excitement for me i did i did a reading and i read from uh um the book because you know the book is set up like uh, like uh, a song so it has 21 verses uh it has an intro and an outro it has um a refrain in the middle so after seven verses there's a refrain and there's another a refrain so it sounds a bit like a song uh, and we also we use a lot of 
comparison to bands and how you know bands start playing together and then they vibe together and then they can improvise together. So we use the rock star as a as a metaphor for becoming a global leader. Um, and um, and 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 we also you know we have a tact. So I I hope you know what a tact is, but the, no, every, I don't. <laughs> totally. Every verse has a tact. So every verse has a count of eight. Ah. So, you know, if you dance, you would know that. Like, because usually we when we dance, we count on eight. So you do, in, in also my, you know, my books are always very action oriented, but this one is extremely action oriented. So in one verse, you have five action steps. So it's like one, two, three, four, five. Then you have two repetitions, which is the homework. And then you have a pause also for music. But also because I noticed that a lot of my clients, they forgot how to take pauses. So, you know, they run from meeting to meeting online. Uh, one meeting follows the next. The whole day they're on Zoom, they're on Teams. They don't get a break anymore. So I try to teach them to get more intentional about taking small pauses as well. That's why every verse has that reminder to pause. This has really been interesting. I thank you for sharing all of this. And I'd like to see the Rockstar album in action. And how can I do that? How can I see it in action? Yeah, so first of all, I mean, you could buy the book. Um, it's um, available on Amazon as an ebook and as a print book. Because a lot of the people who tested the book wanted to... They told me they needed they need it in print. They don't want to work on a uh, Kindle version only. And then when you buy the book, we automatically give you free access to the to the Rock Me app with my online support. Um, and uh, and that's that's a good way to get started. Thank you, Andrew Weinberger, for being on Global TV Talk Show. I think you've uh, whetted the appetite uh, not only in me but of uh, the audience out there in global TV land. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. Yeah, so just because it's the time of the year, October, where, you know, we take the um, applications for the Global Mobility Master Course in the uh, Erasmus University in Rotterdam, I just wanted to remind everyone who's listening to the call that if you want to become a great global mobility manager, please join us. And if anybody wants to talk to me about the course, I'm happy to have a um, content discussion on the course um, because it's the greatest master course in Europe and I think even you know in the rest of the world. So just a little pitch. Yeah, you got it. Okay, so um, Angie Weinberger, uh, so www.angieweinberger, that's W-E-I-N-B-E-R-G-E-R -E -E dot C-H forward slash the hyphen global hyphen rock star, one word, hyphen album. Yeah. Voila. If, you, if you enter <laughs> Rockstar and Weinberger in um, Amazon, you find it as well. It's really easy to find. Okay, audience, thank you for tuning in to Global TV Talk Show. And you you are such a good teacher, Angie, and so easy to listen to. We talked about some really heavy-duty things here, but you're the go-to, and I wish you well. Thank you so much, Ed. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Thank you. Take care. You too. Bye. Thanks.